Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, today we're back with another episode of Hooked on You. We just completed the Huntress uh, route. So we're going to go ahead and start a new file. And we're going to go ahead and be called the Fran M again. Um, uh, this time we're going to choose a totally different route. Um, we're going to try and go for uh, Trapper this time. Uh, you wake up on the beach, soaking wet, salt water stinging inside your throat as you nearly drowned. Water falls from your mouth as you open uh, to gasp for air. You have no memory of how you got here. In fact, you can only remember your own name, but not where you came from or a single fact about your life. What you do know is that despite the outrageous beauty of the landscape around you, you feel incredibly sick to your stomach. Cough, cough. Wow, really? Went down the wrong wow really went down the wrong pipes huh you need a minute or can i go on <laughs> the narrator on this game i love it because i can give you a minute we got plenty of time endless time really an eternity if you catch my drift whoa not now ocean sorry the friend man may i continue please go on okay then as i was cough cough <laughs> you gotta love it you as i was saying Look down at your feet, ankle deep in the crystal blue water of a newly arrived air, uh, arrived wave. As the water recedes back into the ocean, it re uh, reveals a grotesque discovery. Yeah, we had this head last time, and it was uh, it's still just as gross. It's got brains and rotting skin. A decomposing face stares up uh, at you from beneath the sand. All you can do is vomit. A steam of dark bile bugs, worms, and other ick. Question, uh, questions race through the mind. Where are you? How did you get here? Who is behind this incredibly charming, well-spoken voice in your head? However, answers don't come easy. Your mind is completely blank. I will read this two more times, and it's still going to be funny to me. What will you do? Um, did we dig up the face last time? I think we did, so we're going to close our eyes. You close your eyes. This must be a nightmare, right? This is not happening. This is not happening. The mantra uh, centers you, and you are briefly able to find peace. The lapping waves go silent, and for the first time in your entire life, it feels like you're in control. Uh, with uh, when you open your eyes, the ex you're in the exact same place, except now that disgusting face is smiling. Did it have a? It didn't have a coin last time, did it? Even the dead have a wondrous time on our island. I promise you will too. Don't worry, you're uh, you're going to do just fine. When uh, we wouldn't want anyone else. Well, that was sure weird. That voice again. Do oceans normally talk? Your memory isn't right, but you're pretty sure you remember learning as a child that oceans do not speak directly to people in spooky terms. Uh, your mind doesn't have a chance to linger any longer on your current situation as you feel something soft bump into your foot. It's another beach ball. Let's go. When you look down, you find a volleyball sitting in the sand next to you. And you stare down, frozen. A voice calls out from behind you. A little help, please. You turn around, and what you see waiting for you, your jaw just about hits the ground. What's up? I'm so sorry. I can't sit for you anymore. Nah, I can't simp for you either. I really would like to simp for you, but we're going for the trapper route. We're getting the two biggest people out the way first. Yeah, we're going big buff guy. Was it like this last time? Four gorgeous monsters stand halfway between you and a well-tended volleyball court. Each one of them oozes with undead energy, a magical aura reaching out and penetrating you via your eyes. Okay, we got good penetration happening here. Your heart begins to race. Curiosity, fear, desire, you can't help but stare at these casually dressed, let's call them killers, I don't know, let's not be judgmental about, that's just the energy they put out there. So many competing feelings rush through your mind out Competing? Competing feelings rush through your mind at once that you're, uh, that you are completely paralyzed. Hello? 
Uh, there, uh, there are weird days, and then there's this. All you can do is look down at the ball and back up at the monstrous lineup of, well, literal monsters. Sexy ass monsters, though. Yeah, they're pretty good looking, all of them. Um, what do we do? Uh, let's, uh, let's toss it back. You bend down, grab the ball, it's warm from sitting in the sand on this beautiful day. When you give the ball a toss, it arcs beautifully through the air and lands right next to, or right ne in, uh, Huntress's hand. Not bad, stranger. Uh, Huntress's muscles ripple as she grips it in her hand. You look up, uh, you look, uh, her up and down and consider what it might be like to be held tightly in those strong arms, warm perhaps, maybe a little sweaty, but that's okay, it's natural. Try hard to march too much, bleh. They're speaking directly to you, but you still can't bring yourself to reply. You're entranced, yeah. They're all very attractive. When you snap out of it, you realize that everyone has gone back to the volleyball court. Alone again, you look across the beach at these strange residents who casually bat volleyball back and forth, happily ignoring your intrusion onto their private beach. Should you be frightened, worried, excited? I did refer to them as killers, not to give too much away. But at the same time, damn, they look very appealing in their own way, and nobody uh, so much as lifted a blood-soaked finger in your direction. Don't be scared, the Fran Man. You were made for this. Well, geez, if the spooky ocean voice says not to be scared, I'm sure it's all going to be working. It'll all work out okay. With no good reason not to, you decide to head over to see what happens next. Yeah, we know what's going to happen next. It seems like you've derailed the volleyball game just by showing up. You... You derailed the game just by showing up, nitwit. And I guess you're also a nitwit. Look, it's best uh, just to go with what Trapper says when he says it. That's a policy I hold pretty much for anyone who also who always seems to have a uh, fresh uh, blood on their hands. Yeah, look at all that fresh blood. He's good. Hey, don't worry about it. It's all just a game. Existence, that is. Besides, you seem a lot more interesting than a silly game. What's your deal? What brings you here? You mean they were, uh, um, you mean they are here to do more than distract, uh, distract from my total domination? Yeah, yeah, we are. Hey, what's up, Wraith? That was Wraith. The Psy means he, uh, he was done with the game, too. Either that or he saw a butterfly or something. Look, I don't care why this slack jaw moron is here. I just want to know, can I kill him or not? No, no you can't. You know you can't. At least not yet. Huntress, come on. I thought we had something. Oh yeah, not yet. Hey, the Fran man, you might want to, you know, say something. Actually, never mind. There'll be plenty of time for that soon enough. Right now, this group's had some questions for you. Okay, let's go. But be warned, answer quickly and, well... This is a time quiz and it'll be a very important later. Very important. Or not important in any other way whatsoever. Probably that one. I can't remember. How attractive would you say you are? Um, average. I'm pretty average, I think. Just another face in the crowd. Another normal, meaningless life in this endless cycle. I think you're quite cute myself. Like a chipmunk or a grizzly bear. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? Um, strength. Yeah, we're gonna... Invisibility was last time we're gonna... Big strength this time. Super strength, that would be cool. Strength is, isn't all about muscles. Uh, true strength is up here. You expect Trapper to point to his head when uh, instead he taps one of his bulging shoulders. Yeah, you gotta get up these here, these strong soldiers. Soldiers? Shoulders. <laughs> it's uh, specifically in these muscle, nobody gives a shit about your calves. The calf part, true. You always skip leg day. Always skip leg day. What was your best subject in school? Uh, math. But oh, we're gonna hit skipping class. Skipping class. You could say I majored in skipping class. <laughs> if I ever gone to school, I'm sure I would have gone. Uh, I would have done great in skipping class. I prefer skipping over walking almost always. What's my favorite animal? I think we chose cat last time, so we're gonna do dog. Dog. You look absolutely adorable in a little puppy mask. I'm not trying to woo you over, Huntress. We've done you before. What's my favorite color? Lime green. Okay, blood red. Some call it the color of love, but love is just another word for pain. What's my dream job? 
Nightclub promoter, let's go. Everyone groans, and let's be honest, they're right to do so. <laughs> like, ugh, you really? I think they had enough of Trapper. Or not Trapper, but um, Trickster. Luring folks, folks in a dark. Not just anyone can do that. Favorite ice cream flavor. Oh, man. We've already talked about this, but we're going to go with uh, chocolate. Chocolate. My favorite flavor is pain. Same here. Mine is vanilla swirled with uh, pain. I think it's a I think mint chocolate chip is I think mint chip is the greatest flavor ever conceived myself. But enough about ice cream. Am I right? Hold on a second. That reminds me. I am right. Always. It's a lesson you should learn before we uh, get too much further. Do what I say and you if you want to survive. Pick mint chip. We're teaching lessons now narrator. You recall? Yeah, yeah, we 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 uh, we we did this last time. Best flavor is mint chip. So obedient. I think you're gonna do just fine. Yeah, last time we did this, we got like just nailed and just whoosh, death. We got the game over screen. Anywho, now that they know so much about you, I'm sure the group wants uh, you to start getting to know them. I'm Trapper. I'm pretty much run things around here. I'm the smartest, richest, strongest person on this whole island. I don't like losers. If you want to know any, if you want to know what a loser is, uh, say hello to Wraith. Sup, Wraith? You're a loser. Hi, I'm Wraith. I'm nothing like everyone else. I like nice people and low and loathe big dumb idiots. Oh wow, you're actually very pretty. Hey, what's up? I'm Spirit. I don't like most things. Yeah, you're very uh, pretty and weeboo-ish, but we're going for Trapper. I don't really hate most things either. It's not worth my time, but the things I do hate, I really hate. You know? I, I get it. Based on my personal observation, life is nothing but suffering, and society is a carefully calculated lie to keep everyone in C. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, you woke. She's woke. Jeez, it's like she's was downright murdered by society. She hates it so much. Oh no, wait. I'm remembering Spirit's story now, and it's almost exactly what happened. Hi, I'm Hump Huntress. Don't let these bummers get you down. There's a lot of fun to be had on this island, along with lots of love. Yeah, there it is. If you know what I mean. Grow up. Girl body! I've explained this a thousand times. I'm dead, but I'm not a literal ghost. I just create a trail of fog. I'm not made of it. Whatever, fro fog body. That's not nice. He's not nice. Yeah, he's not. You love it. Only sometimes. Ew, really? That's disgusting. That's why she likes it. Understandable. Don't speak for me. I also hate it. Stop speaking entirely, actually. The first time ever I agree with Wraith. Let's move on, otherwise they'll do this all day. Besides, if I know this crew, and I do, they'll want to show off soon enough. Alright, let's see uh, Let's see how uh, Trapper over here shows off. If we're done playing, let's do something else instead. Wow, for once I actually agree with that, me head. I said we go back, uh, go to my yacht. It's a, uh, it's the massively boat uh, docked nearby. I'll give everyone a taste of true luxury and power. Wraith rolls his eyes. Don't mind him. He just hates fun and happiness. No, I hate the endless, despite soul-crushing pursuit of of wealth. Uh, the way it's flaunted, need flaunted needlessly. And the cruel uh, cruelty it in, uh, engenders. Engenders? Engenders. How about hanging out by the pool? I find the water calming. Simple. Beautiful. Hey, what about our volleyball game? We can exercise and have uh, so much fun as a group. Are you all serious? There's a perfectly good lounge to chill out right over there. I'm tired, and besides, I hate being in the sun. Where do you want to go? Let's, uh, let's do the yacht. As Yeah, yacht. This is the lounge pool. Yeah, we're gonna... How about the yacht? Perfect. You obviously have a... a modicum... Modicum? Modicum? Modicum of good taste and judgment. At least I hope you do. Guess we'll find out. Worst case, we'll be able to find out how strong your bones are. How heavy you are to... Uh, how heavy you are in, to pick up and throw. And how fast your lifeless body sinks should be pretty chill regardless. Uh, hold on. Just for a moment. What's up, Dwight? This is Dwight and Claudette. Yeah, we know them. We met them last time. We actually killed them last time, and they came back. They're also the cooks, waiter, yeah, they're everything. They're literally everything. Yep, they're the only help. 
God, I love their outfit. I really hope Dead by Daylight puts this as a skin in the game. None of the others survived. Um, survived the interview process, I mean, hence uh, why we shall uh, here for th remain, uh, refer to them as survivors with a capital S. These two have worked here a long time. So very long, I don't I know how long it's been. Sorry, anyway, I should probably let Dwight and Claudette do their mandated jobs. They sure look happy, but they're vibrating with nervous energy that is uh, starting to give me the creeps. Yeah, what's up, guys? I'll now escort you to the venue of your choosing. However, in the future, we recommend waiting for us to present you with options whenever possible, and it'll just run off to various activities unsupervised. I want to be unsupervised. Let me do me. Uh, we don't have much uh, autonomy around here. The least you can do is allow us to do our job. The most you can do is help us get off this. Yeah, yeah. Dwight, yes, pardon me. Please follow us. They really want to get off. Yeah, is there something I can help you with? Those two, Claudette and Dwight. They just start to mention something about wanting to escape. Is escape an option? Should I be trying to escape? Escape? No, no. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, back to the app. We're going back to the app. We're going to go to the app. Let's skip a lot of this dialogue. We're okay, so we don't know this. Uh, Trapper is very pleased with your choice. Not just because he owns this boat either. Clearly, you understand the importance of approaching the fine, appreciating the finer things in life. Unfortunately, though, this means these un, uh, uncouthed, uncouthed heathens are now on my beautiful boat. I'll make sure the uh, I'll make sure the help wash it as soon as they leave. Not exactly a genuine host, but w what he said isn't even the worst thing about his comments. Oh man, what else is he gonna say? What's the worst thing he could say, right? It's that he made them in front. It's that he made them in front of everyone else. So he could just make those comments, just don't do it in front of everyone. Do it behind closed doors. Loudly. They're used to it at this point though, so it's time to get to the good stuff, eating. As the guest of honor, you can choose the appetizer. Here's a menu. What do you want served? Oh. S something in is that French? Uh, let's do beef. Yeah, let's do beef. I, uh, I like I like a good beef item. What a car pocket. What that that. Raw, simple, tasty, maybe even a little risky. It's beef all the way for me. And I'm sure with a group. With such particular taste, we'll all surely love it. Great choice, it's my favorite. Sometimes it's too cold uh, to start a fire, so you eat what you can and how you can. So it's just straight up raw meat. Gross, not just meat, but raw meat. It's just straight off the cow, just whoop, or human, whatever it is, bam, give me that raw. Uh, will you be wearing a fur coat throughout the meal too? <laughs> no, it's too warm for that. Maybe just some little slippers. Uh, the survivors arrive with trays of food as everyone stands around and makes conversation. Enjoy. Please, for our sake. They catch Trapper glaring at them for daring to speak directly to you, but Dwight pushes on anyway. Can we get, can we get you anything else? I mean, if he's a dick, we should just get rid of him, right? Like, shoo. What you can get is lost now. <laughs> Trapper snickers as you casually abuse... Uh, uh, at your casual abuse of these lowly survivors, I guess when you, you're when you got a bunch of giant metal hooks shoved through your skin, you form a special kind of relationship with pain. Dwight wipes away a tear. He should have known better than to talk to the likes of you. <laughs> oh yeah, we're super giga Chad. Like this is so bad. We're gonna be absolute dicks. Now that the help is gone, uh, the killers, you know, killers is a bit harsh. They haven't killed anyone today. Anyway, anyhow, should we call them suitors or something? Hmm, I don't know. That lacks a bit of a punch. I'm sticking with killers. Killers, uh, the killers have begun to hover around you. They each seem to be waiting for a moment. Uh, they each seem wanting, uh, they each seem to be waiting for a moment alone with you. Except Wraith, he seems to be studying the corner of the room, definitely avoiding any engagement with you at all costs. Oh, he's scared of us, it's because we're... He likes nice things, so we're not nice. Who will allow you to... Uh, who will you allow to steal? Um, 
steal you away for a second. Trapper. I mean, Trapper, right? You make eye contact with Trapper, and he immediately pushes the others aside. You already show promise as a prospective mate. Oh, man. Therefore, I'd actually like to get to know you better. So I'll let you in on a secret. When the time comes, I have a private little getaway here on this island no one else knows about. It's time to die in. I mean, for... I mean, for. It's the it's the die for. Ah, oh, okay, okay. It's the die for. It's a hidden spot where I enjoy all of life's many bounties. I want to, sh I want to show it to you. Not because you're worthy of it just yet, though. Mainly because it'll piss everyone off. Uh, you chose... <laughs> It's gonna make everyone mad. You chose me and not them. Only me. I always like to remind them who's really in charge around here. Oh yeah, and also that part about getting to know you better, that's that's important too. I mean, he wants to get to know us at least, right? I guess. Everyone put down your appetizers. Uh, appetizers, I'm bored. And on my yacht, that's unacceptable. Declan... Declan? D... D... Declan? Oh, he's calling the Dwight, but he's just calling him by his, like, peasant name. Yes, sir. Prepare a, a, a libash, libash, libation? Pre prepare something, something that will impress our new guest. By the looks of them, shouldn't take much. Oh, man, come on, dude. Carla, make sure we got both boozy and non-alcoholic versions available. Nobody has to drink if they don't want to. I'm a killer, not an asshole. I mean, it, I, he has options. I mean, he had the vegan option, he had the full meat option, and then he has alcoholic beverages and then non-alcoholic beverages. Maybe he's a, maybe he's not a dick. Maybe he's just mis misunderstood, or maybe he's just a dick. Maybe he's a misunderstood dick. Declare, Claire. I thought their names were Dwight and Claudette. Who the hell are Dwight and Claudette? Hey, Daryl and Christine? <laughs> you know, those two, maybe they work on that other island. You, the Fram Man. Ready your mouth hole. Oh. Okay. Well, this guy really knows how to sell a drink. Well, undoubtedly... Well, undoubtedly crass. He does have a point. A minigame is incoming, and you... Uh, this, yeah, yeah, the minigame, the minigame. Yeah, yeah, we know how to play. We know how to play. Yep, 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 yep. We're ready. All right, here we go. Oh, we're taking shots. And I missed. There we go. That's perfect. There we go. We got it. We got it in. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. But we still got it. The whole uh, amnesiac, amnesiac thing is already a lot to take in without also pouring a bunch of drinks on top of it. So it's not unexpected that you didn't perform perfectly. Lucky for you, my desire for perfection is only matched by my enjoyment in watching losers fail publicly. So we actually did good by failing, I guess. But don't uh, expect luck to get you through this forever. Overwhelmed by the afternoon activity, you feel yourself spinning out of control. Was it the drinks? The pressure to perform? The rocking of the ships? Smartly, you, you pound a pitcher of water before everything goes dark around you. Yeah, I feel like if you have motion sickness and you drink on a boat or any kind of, like, water vehicle, it's probably going to have a bad time. And it turns out a quick nap was just what you needed. Oh. When you come to, Dwight and Claudette are somehow already back on shore waving at the boat. I'm pretty sure that means it's time to head back and leave this yacht behind. What a shame, too. Trapper planned to serve live monkey brims as an entree. Wasn't there a show that, like, sh served live monkey brains? Uh, like, I think it was called, like, Faces of Death or something like that. It was, like, an older show back in, like, the 80s or 90s. Something crazy like that. Man, that was... Oof. Seems like the next activity is mealtime. How quaint. You were, ex you, were, uh, you were expecting what? Capture the flag? Do you know how complicated it is to run a game like that? Much more so than sitting and talking. You arrive at the cookout area to find an assortment of picnic tables scattered around. What were you expecting? Some kind of grand hall with a huge banquet table? This isn't some prestigious fancy epic like you'd 
that you find on the cable to I claw it usher you to your seats but there were very limited seating directly around you and oh great terrific it seems that everyone wants to sit next to you I know who we're picking Meanwhile, he, he refuses to sit next to Wraith or Trickster, and Trickster, what's up, my boy? You're not bad, as, you're not bad, and then that, like, fake bat. Yeah, yeah. Hey there, you're looking good. Yeah, yeah. And we literally can't let Huntress and Trapper sit together. No, seriously, their arms are too big, they can't fit on the table if they sit side by side. Look at this. We can't even fit everyone on the- yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we can't fit everyone on the screen joke, we've already been here. Okay, Dwight and Claudette are direct- uh, are directing traffic. You can sit on one side with the rest of them will sit opposite of you. Hutchison and Trapper can sit at the ends with their enormous sexy arms. Not everyone is seated. Uh, we can begin dinner. Tonight's meal was prepared slowly and carefully in both love and hate for 12 hours over a spit. We hope you enjoy. We really, really hope you do. Hey, you didn't actually tell us what you're serving. What are we eating? I think we're eating, uh, Felix, right? It's meat, seasoned with a specific number of special herbs and spices. We simply can't divulge. My favorite. Yeah, meat is good. Meat is great. Meat is murder. You pippy. Which, you know, considering what you've been up to, who are you to get judged, you know? I'm just, I'm just sharing facts, and you need to murder something to eat its meat. So, like, that's technically true. Yeah, it is, but, like, come on, man. Don't be a hippie about it. Technically, it's Technically true is the best kind technicality technically 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 true is the best kind of true Okay enough yapping let's eat yeah man I'm hungry I'm starving I'm actually gonna make a pizza soon Hey the framing you thinking what I'm thinking? It's gonna be a person on that spit right or several parts overlapping people perhaps I haven't seen many pigs wearing palm tree button down prints you know Yeah you're right you're like I mean you could get a pet pig and put a shirt on him you look closely at this, but you spot the, uh, what definitely appears to be a scrap of fabric sandwiched between the layers of meat. I think I might be sick. Is there anything else to eat? This took 12 hours. You're gonna eat it. I don't care what you like. And we do literally everything else on this island. Actually, there's one thing you're not doing today. You're not carving up this delectable meat. Wow. He's right for a change, because I am with my broad axe. It's the perfect tool to easily chopping anything in twain. First, who says twain? Sometimes I swear it's like we're all from completely different historical eras. They are. Secondly, I handle this with my cleaver, fast, powerful, and clean. At least it's clean when the meat is cooked, no blood. Uh, you two and your ridiculous bicep swing contest. Enough, grow up. Obviously, my gorgeous katana is the only option, obviously. The hell it is. Oh, I'll show you both my katana and send you to the actual hell if you like. Please stop, please. I hate it when we fight or talk or even when we look at each other in the eye. I can do it. I have a, uh, I have the skull of Azarov. Azarov. I keep... There's some words in this game you'll see that I can't pronounce. Great. Instead of slicing it, you can club it. Let's <laughs> club it to death. Hey, the Fremen, I know. This isn't what you want to eat, but hurry up and volunteer so we can carve up Felix. I mean, dinner. <laughs> Otherwise, this will go on for hours. No, uh, hyperbole. No, they... The, no hyperbole. They once argued over who had the most effective weapon for 72 hours straight. Um, well, Trapper. Maybe, no, actually, Spirit has the most effective one because it's an actual katana. This is like... Uh, Huntress's is for, like, chopping trees. His is just some handmade one from, like, a skull. His is just rusted bits of metal, which may be effective, but like, Spirit's katana is meant to be used as an actual weapon. Um, despite being a bunch of cold-blooded killers, for some reason, they're always terrified of tetanus. Hey, why don't you just let me carve up dinner? Splendid idea. We'd hate for it to get cold. We hated it. <laughs> he hated it when it got cold. Here's a machete, freshly sharpened. Yep, mini game. All right. Yep, we're ready. We we already know how this is gonna go. Slice right in the middle. Perfect. Oh, we got two perfects. Uh, we missed. We missed it. Ooh, that was that's a perfect. That's pretty good. 
I like to see what you can do with a less clumsy weapon. Yeah, I said it. Machetes are dumb. <laughs> uh, dinner is finally served. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, spirit. Uh, do I want to do a spirit run? No, no. We're sticking with we're sticking with Trapper. For real. The sounds is especially coming from the masked killers while they eat, which involves lifting their mask and shoving food up from behind them, are nasty. Spirit, meanwhile, doesn't even eat. She's the only one who seems to be real, uh, really embracing being dead. They're all dead, right? This is obviously hell. I mean, kind of. Come on, we're uh, still uh, trying to be mysterious here. You think mis mystery comes easy? Claudette and Dwight aren't the ones who've been working their asses off to make this night perfect. But at least they're lifting their mask. This is only 99% as disgusting as it could if they just tried to mash it. <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine, like, like Jason from Friday the 13th just, like, takes a slab of meat and tries to shove it through, like, the holes of his hockey mask and it just goes in and just the rest just plops everywhere? Spirit, uh, why aren't you hungry? Yeah, why aren't you eating? The two best things about being dead is not having to eat. That's only one thing. Think about it, Fran. Number two is is no number two. One less thing to think about in the afterlife. Even if I wanted to eat, I have no idea what would actually follow. You know, you might have noticed, but I'm mostly just a bunch of dis uh, dismembered body parts floating in spectral form. Yeah, she is. You see how deep the cut to my abdomen is? I think my digestive tract... Uh, I don't think my... Digestive tract connects anymore. Yeah, I'd probably just like plop out of her like rib or something Between the food and the flavor of the group it uh, this might be the worst meal in history But even worse is they're all staring at you. You're not eating They don't like that. I think they want an explanation. Why? Why don't you tell them? Um Okay, we tried the seagull one last time, right? We're gonna go with uh I'm sorry, we'll, we'll just apologize be like, actually, it's not the food or the company. I'm just feel super conscious how I look when I eat. I'm just pretending to be grossed out by dinner so I have an excuse not to chew in front of everyone. Sorry if I made things awkward. Sorry if I made things awkward. I'm actually extremely hungry. Yeah, watching people eat is gross, but try to relax and not worry what everyone else thinks. True, don't worry about what people think. It's so inappropriate. It's so important to always remember people are watching you, judging you, definitely not ignoring you, right guys? Guys, is anyone listening to me? Typically a group that includes one, if not more cannibals staring at you with meat juices dripping from their chins would be quite scary. However, right now you are barely able to keep your head up, let alone get scared and run away. I'm a narrator, not a physician, so please don't take this as medical advice, but I'm pretty sure you need to eat to stay alive. Oh, hey, it's me again, your friend, mentor, and guide, narrator. To the narrators of the ocean. Not sure how I feel about this characterization, but I'll allow it. Right here, and you might be the only one who can help, you know? Uh, there's only one thing you might, uh, you must do to survive. You have to figure out why you're all really here. No one can tell you, not unless uh, you follow the right path, or at least a right path. There's too many of those to count. Hopefully you pick at least one of them. Uh... I think there's got to be like four, right? Unless there's like a hidden fifth one. Because there are even more wrong paths. Many of them lead to your demise. Others lead to something even worse. Like eternal pain. Uh, starting senses, uh, starting scenes over and having to fast forward back to where you were. Am I right? <laughs> this, oh man, that ice cream scene. Um, for this place holds many secrets, even from itself. But... Uh, the only one that truly matters can only be learned if you answer the most important question. Why are you here? Answer that and you'll learn the truth. The ultimate truth. Big mysterious. I gotta give, uh, give it up to this ocean character. That's some quality early game storytelling if I do say so myself. You wake up to find Trapper holding your limp bo uh, body, body genuinely pouring cold, uh, cool water in your mouth. You had me worried there passing out like that. I thought maybe you died. That uh, would have been terrible. Nobody dies on this island without me killing him. You hear that? Nobody. Thanks, I guess. Don't mention it. Uh, I mean that. Don't mention it. Someone might think I care for you. That can't happen. I've got a reputation. I love that. I love the whole, like, 
like, hey, I love you, but when we're in public, we, we bros, you know, we just bros, but like deep down inside, I love you. I'm starting to understand, I think. When you went down, it looked like you hit your head on the edge of the table. If it, if it were me, that table would have been the one to crack open, but I'm sure it really hurt you, though. Wow, he's actually kind of caring. So I figured a little ocean air might help you wake up, and I brought you down by the water. That's really thoughtful of you. What, um, what a magnificent, muscular, wealthy, artistically gifted Adon Adonis can't be... Th you have so many words for yourself, so many. Don't answer because it's obvious. A, I don't know that word. I don't. Adonis was a pussy killed by a boar. Get out of here with that garbage. I do find myself in an unusual position though. Yeah, what is it? Despite the overwhelming uh, probability that I'll eventually find myself standing over your lifeless corpse, I don't want you dead just yet. So I'm here to talk to you like a regular human person. Yeah, talking. That's that's how relationships begin, talking. And right now I'm worried that I might be coming off a bit too forceful. I know my mere presence can be intimidating, but I don't want you to get the wrong impression about me or how I feel about you. Okay, okay. So I'll just put it out there. I might possibly like you. I can't say uh, that about everyone or really anyone on this island. There's something different about you. You aren't like the others. Henceforth, I think it's time I shared something with you I haven't shared with anyone in a long time. Oh. It's a big part of who I am, and I think you're ready for it. You watch as Trapper reaches into a uh, singlet and pulls out some sort of rolled up scrolled paper. He grips it firmly in his hand. It's one of my sketches. I don't know if you know this, but I love to draw. The art has always been... Oh, Trapper likes to draw. Is that is that lore? Is that actual lore? Would you like to see it? Yeah, let's yeah, let's see it. Yes, I'd love to. I'm so excited you're ready to share. I'm, I'm so excited that you're ready to share with me. Trapper does not unroll the paper and show it to you. He simply stares at you and watches your soft smile. Uh, soft... Watches your smile soften and fade. The longer he stares at uh, you, the closer he seems to get. Oh, what an interesting response. I don't even, I don't even know what the picture is. Thanks, I hope. Trevor looks at you, a piercing look even though his mask, he's, uh, even through his mask, he smirks, but it's not clear why. Then he turns and leaves. Just as things are really heating up, you hear a flurry of footsteps behind you and you quickly spin around ready to fend off whatever new danger have popped up on this strange island. Oh, it's those two. Only to find it's Dwight and Claudette sprinting across the beach, clipboards in hand, which they were waving in the air above their heads. It's very important we stick to the initiary and attend each event as scheduled. Yeah, okay, the schedule is so important to these guys. Uh, just just let it be. Let the, pe let, let the people do what they want to do. Playing, uh, playing sick for cute flirt points was not part of the evening activities. That strictly uh, slotted in for after campfire story. At this rate, we'll be late. Playing sick? No, I was. No time for excuses. Well, there is, but that's scheduled for after what comes after the flirting. Man, you guys just have it like campfire, playing sick, then you can flirt. That's the order. No ifs, ands, or buts. Go, go, go. Once everyone has gathered at the fire pit, Dwight and Claudette quickly uh, make an announcement. We're not going to blame anyone in particular, but someone, and we're not going to say who, but so don't worry, you, hasn't been sticking to the schedule. That means we're behind on time for evening activities, and we'll only have time for one person. Yep, so this is where we uh, pick uh, who gets to, um, this is where we get to pick uh, who out of these four gets to tell their story, so we're just gonna skip through some of this, because we already know. Okay. Please pick someone so that the tropical vacation doesn't turn into the- Okay, so we're gonna pick, uh, Trapper. Trapper. I choose you, Trapper. Whoa, 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 The entire experience is being carefully crafted to avoid an IP infringement lawsuit. Let's be careful with this- with the catchphrase, will ya? Yes, of course, you want to hear my story. It's a good one and an old one, too. Okay, Trapper's story, so let's prepare for this. This is an infamous tale about two young friends from my hometown. 
best buds who did everything and anything together. Fish, hunt, fight, skip rocks, climb the tallest trees, climb the highest peaks. Okay. The more dangerous something was, the more they wanted to do it. But everything changed one day when the slightly older friend asked the other for a favor. My friend doesn't want me going out with... Uh, my father doesn't want me going out with you anymore. He said that we're dangerous together. We take risks we shouldn't, and if I keep hanging out with you, he says one day I'm going to get hurt. Do you think you could come by and tell my dad we'll be careful so we could still be friends? Oh. Of course, said the other friend, who was always eager to please uh, his best mate. So the two went to see the concerned father, who puffed away at his pipe as he listened to every promise his son's pal made about uh, made it about being more cautious. But when he, uh, but when the slightly younger and slightly smaller boy finished, his father responded, stone-faced, "No, sorry. This is the best for the both of you. I don't want my son hanging out with you anymore." And that's it. The young boy was so crestfallen he left immediately. No one would, uh, no one would see him cry. He would not give them the satisfaction. Especially because they didn't. Uh, if they did, they might uh, tell the others in town, and they'd they'd all think him. Three. Is he the young boy? Is he the small, weak boy? Worse, his own father would never forgive his son for letting others see him that way. But he was too upset to go home right away, or be spotted in uh, in the path. So instead, he sat outside his friend's house in the little hiding spot they had often sat in during rainstorms or when they didn't want anyone to see them trading interesting rocks they dug up. Oh no. It was qu it was quiet as he uh, stifled his own tears, and that's when they he heard it. A sound, an odor wafting uh, alongside the pipe smoked carried uh, on dark winds. Betrayal. Thanks, Dad. I didn't want to hang out with him anymore, but I didn't want to tell him that he'd be a big baby about it. Oh no! It's okay, I get it. Don't blame you at all either. He's soft and needy. You need strong friends. Someday you really, uh, someday you you really would have ended up hurting him, be uh, hurt, end up getting hurt because of him. You need friends you can rely on. Dude, Trapper was a weak kid at one point. What? Trapper looks angry. The muffled tear stopped, and the hiding spot that uh, had been a pit of sadness now overflowed with rage. The boy went home. If anyone passed him on the path, all they saw was determination. That night he spoke to no one. He ate no dinner. He slept no sleep. <laughs> he slept no sleep. The next day he got up early and sat near the tallest tree in the woods by his former friend's house. It was, one, it was the one tree no kid in town has ever conquered. It was top, its top remained untouched. He remained there till dark before he finally went home. He did this for eight days and on the ninth, his old mate finally passed by. Hey, what are you doing here? Asked uh, Judas. Nothing, out hunting squirrels and set. Nothing, out, hand, out hunting squirrels and sat down to eat his apple lied the younger boy oh he said okay i'm sorry the quotations threw me off i was like i had a lingering moment oh uh yeah sure i hope you're okay i can't believe my dad did that it's so unfair yes it was truly unthinkable answered the boy through the through a smile that carried no warmth yeah well okay i'll see you around but before the betrayer could leave, his old friend called out to him. I'm going to climb this tree, he said. I'm going to make it to the top. The hell you are, no one can do that. And definitely can't do it. And they definitely can't do that, do it by themselves. He had him. I can. And I will. Understand why you can't, though. Your dad said you're afraid you'll get hurt. Throw in some shade. Throw in some shade. I'm not afraid. He's afraid, replied the friend. Now seething with shame with his own rage. Oh, forget what my dumb old father said. I'll do it with you. You'll see I'm not afraid. And so the two climbed and climbed, each making it higher than they ever had before. 
they continued to climb and whenever they could they reached the top uh will never uh, uh, but whether they would have reached the top will never be known because the turncoat uh, because the turncoat the boy who had made his father lie for him fell before he could make it all the way to the top oh no some say it was no accident this is his uh, old chum that is some say it was no accident that his old chum pushed him but how could he he was the weak one after all of course such a weak child can never send his best friend to his death or could he or could he this was an accident uh, accident tragic for sure but nothing more of course a larger a mouth later uh, a month a mile a mouth a month later through though no one could explain how the dead boy's father choked to death on his own pipe did the trapper shove that pipe down that man's throat yeah definitely a good call on staying quiet after that uh, silence really is the best uh, at times like this shit what about you the friend man what do you think about oh dude that was we're gonna stroke his ego that's a story now that's a story yes it is oh the coin we never got the what do we do with the coin last time guess he liked that response he's handing you a gold coin and on that note everyone decides it's time to take a break and split up uh, for a little bit so that they can all have a moment alone before bed everyone leaves you alone by the fire the only thing you hear is the ocean slowly lapping against the shore that is nice a true moment of peace and tranquility the last of all of this uh, that last all seven seconds because trickster shows up and he's blaring the latest song um hey you look lonely mind if i join you he's gonna wait for an answer so yeah this guy uh super egotistical too just as bad as trapper but we love him i know you've been hearing from these guppies all day but i want to hear from uh hear something from a big fish uh, but i want you to hear something from a big fish like me something special that those in charge of this island don't want you to hear I'm the ultimate catch on this island, the only lobster in the ocean of sardines. No one can give you what I can. You just have to find me. Come find me, baby. Trickster leaves you. You're a bit confused uh, about what to make of his uh, cryptic clues, but you aren't going to get any time to yourself to think about them just, just yet. Trapper approaches you. Finally, those dweebs are gone. Now that uh, I know we're totally alone, we can really talk. Let's get away from this ash and smoke and take a dip in the pool. Whether it's water sweat or enemies uh, bloody, I prefer my muscles glistening and not dried. Understandable. 110%. You don't like dry skin. Dry skin is gross. We don't want that. I dip in a pool with a trapper. You came a long way in a single day. I'm not saying you shouldn't follow him. Uh, shouldn't follow him and offer like that. Just, just don't forget our little talk. We're still in day one, right? Yeah, we're still in day one. You and your story uh, teller friend slip into the water. It's the right temperature for an evening dip. Plus, if someone's jealous, if some jealous shark comes along and manages to jump in, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Sharknado joke last time. Insert Sharknado joke. Trapper looks surprisingly relaxed. That's definitely weird. Okay, these small bubbles rising in the water around him might have something to do. My oh, man farting in the pool. Look, the friend, man. I didn't want to reveal anything in front of the others. You never know when a loser is really a maggot. Now, though, I want to hear uh, what you really thought of my story. What, uh, what, what was its real purpose? To stab, to establish dominance, right? That's what he wants to do. Because vengeance is dark, but like, let's do this one. Scare everyone and establish dominance. Interesting answer. Trapper stares at you for way too long. It's like he's looking into your soul, but he says nothing. He's still staring. He stares for such a long time, it becomes quite romantic, and then he, he as it keeps going on, it becomes downright horrifying. Yeah, dude, stop staring at me. Chill runs down your spine. Finally, Dwight Claudette show up and says, and so everyone is reconceiving at the fire pit. How dare you interrupt me? I mean us. No, wait, me. I meant me. 
Trapper throws his cleaver at Dwight and Claudette's feet. What the hell are, uh, was he even hiding? Where the hell was- yeah, what was he hiding on? Just right in that, like, one-piece bathing suit? Most importantly, what do you think of his, uh, little cleaver toss? Let's laugh, yeah. Hi, uh, you see how scary they, uh, scared they both look. That was amazing, serves- serves the servants' rights. Cleverly wordplay. Clever wordplay. You're alright by me. So what do we do with this coin? We, that's our, like, second token. Trapper flips you a gold coin, which is def- Which you definitely was keeping in his crotch. Ah. Trapper... You feel your toes uh, tingling and notice the temperature has dropped significantly. It's getting chilly in these waters. Usually it's so warm around you. You mind if I snuggle up your way? <laughs> yes, I do mind. He's like, don't touch me. Peasant. Before we have to spend too much time watching you sit here there all alone trying to figure out exactly what you're doing with your life, we figured we'd let you know it's time for bed. And you're kind of the last person enjoying the facilities, so the thing is, you see, we can't really get our night started until yours ends, so pack it up, kiddo. Your fireside sleeping arrangement away. Oh man, you head over to the campfire. The heat is comforting. Uh, out night chilling. Look into the crackling embers. You think about Trapper's story. Are you being led to your demise by an untrustworthy narrator? Hey, wait a second. I swear to you that you're not. Come on. You gotta trust me a little more than uh, than you trust Trapper before you can dwell too much on your fate. Claudia and Dwight arrive again. Now they're uh, familiar, creepy smiles stretch from ear to, stretch from ear to ear, and it's a bit. Uh, menacing. We apologize for the accommodations. We weren't prepared for another guest. Or we're gonna make you comfortable or die trying. Uh, well, I mean, I'm already dying. They had a, they they hand over a pillow and a blanket and welcome you to snuggle up by the fire. Is it gonna be that trapper pillow, the body pillow? Just keep the keep the volume to a minimum, or other guests uh, our other guests aren't the type that want to rob you. To rob their beauty sleep. Okay, so this is this is the radio one, right? Yeah, yeah. All right, so this is this is the radio one. There's no station here. None. We're just gonna turn it off. We already been through it before. Who'd you like? Oh, we get to summon one person. Trapper, are you around? I was wondering if I could get a little company. Shepard tells you his secret for for falling asleep when he's feeling restless. A heavy bearskin blanket is all you need, and if that doesn't work, I just go for a late night walk and punch the first person I come across. That is called assault. <laughs> I know you're a murderer, but that's called assault. You're a real charmer, Trapper. I'm not sure I'm brave enough to kill a bear or skilled enough to skin it. You're certainly not either one of those things, as far as I can tell. Dang it, Trapper. Come on, man. Here, hold on to this. Try not to hurt yourself. Trapper hands you an entire bear's paw completely with sharp claws. It's like the most aggro version of a rabbit's foot you've ever seen. Dude, that is actually... Could you imagine not having a rabbit's foot, but having a big old bear paw? And bear paws are huge, so this is not just like a tiny little like chain. This is like... Like, at least this big. Like, at least, like, a good foot. Right? It's gotta be. You finally start to feel sleepy. Except, maybe this isn't really a sleepy feeling. Maybe you're just paralyzed. You're just trying to close your eyes. But you can't. Darkness overtakes you. The dark voice from earlier speaks to you again. It shouldn't still be as spooky, but you've had a whole day of strange voices in your head. But this one is still undoubtedly odd. Had a good time on a private yacht today, did you, huh? Yeah, I did. That's comforting. That's a comforting, comforting rocking situation. That was all me, yeah. You're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the ocean waves. You're awake. Suddenly, you see someone looming over you. Uh, what are you doing? Last time, it was Trapper looming over us. Now it's you. Wraith stares at you awkwardly. He says nothing, just stares. You look around to see if there's something going on behind you or on this other side. Nope. Just staring. Oh, you're awake. 
I saw you with Trapper right before bedtime. Are you making some sort of a alliance? Are you with them? Who is them? I'm just making sure you are who you are. Say you are. I've been burned before, and sometimes something. I've been burned before, and something seems off on this island since you've arrived, even more than usual. Um, maybe we can talk about it that tomorrow. It's just since you've got here, I I just think that we could have a really nice day tomorrow together. It's just you have no idea how long I've been here with these monsters. To be honest, I have no idea either. They're just awful, boring, loud, and stupid. I'm guessing boring is spirit. Loud is trapper, stupid is huntress. You're different. There's finally someone here on my level. You're thoughtful, interesting, gentle. I could think we could, uh, you know, have fun. No, no we can't. I could show you some cool stuff if you want. If you don't, that's totally cool. I get it, no pressure. In fact, probably just forget it. I was here. Good night. Finally alone. For real this time, maybe, we drift off to sleep again. Hopefully, you're not poisoned. Oh, man. Were we poisoned? Were we poised? Wait a second. Where are we? This is... Oh, uh, yep. It's one of those confessionals. I think today went really well. There was... Uh, uh, these were some of my first interactions with someone who isn't a parent that didn't end in bloodshed or... Uh, ultimately? Well, un or untimely uh, uh, per perishing, perishing in my Russian cottage. So I'm counting today as a win, no matter what happens. What do I think of the newcomer? Oh, um, do I have to say, oh, I do mm, attractive, mysterious? I don't really know what many others' uh, words since I was raised by my mom in the woods until she was skewered by an elk. And I had to wish her, uh, wash her uh, entrails off my uh, seraphan. That being said, the other three should make uh, sure to be on their guard. I don't know who is uh, who this newcomer will want to spend time with tomorrow, but I, for one, will not let my guard down easily. Who knows about the others? Wraith, I think, knows more than he's letting on about this place, but he's a hard nut to crack. Yeah. He we, we, we've been collecting coins, I've noticed. Uh, one was by the zombie. I don't think we got a coin by the zombie last time. One was by Trapper, and I think... Was two by Trapper? I, I don't remember, but we've been collecting coins, and I'm sure it's like part of like a bigger story than they let off to be. Uh, meanwhile, Spirit is just screaming all the time. Uh, major buzzkill and Trapper. Oof, where do I even begin with Trapper? He's buff, sure, but daddy issues much? Sheesh. Look. I don't need anyone. I've been perfectly fine on my own since my mother died. I eat a fine diet of raw deer, uh, bear, and human, and it's a bit fiddle. That being said, something about this newcomer makes me think that I might be missing out on some huge part of this thing called life. If I'm being honest, I just want to kill uh, just about every person I meet within a minute of meeting them, even the few people I can tolerate. I want to see suffer. I want to see suffer for a long time before I kill them. But this person. For this, for some reason, I could, um, for some reason, I would like to, like them to continue living, for now. One false step, and, well, we're dead. He's just gonna, like, one wrong step, whoop, death. Well, you know, everyone calls me Trapper for a reason, and they better call me Trapper. <laughs> uh, I wanna know the names that they, he doesn't wanna be called. I swear, if I watch this later, and you list me as Evan, I'm going to kill the sh- uh, sh Sharon guy? Is that his name? Is Trapper's name Evan? I don't really care. This island's full of people who don't really like me, so what's one more? I don't want to get distracted from my plan anyways. What's his plan? You know, I think I learned a lot about myself today. I always thought I was doomed to be alone for eternity. One of my creeping des uh, des uh, desires for revenge to keep me company. Now I know it. She wants to be left alone. Huh, interesting. Alright, and it's day two, and we're gonna end the video right here, actually. This is where we're gonna end the video. Day two. Um, man. Uh, Trapper's route and story was totally different. We even got some lore. I didn't know Trapper's name this whole time was Evan. I've been playing Dead by Daylight for three years, and I didn't know his name was Evan. So, god, that's crazy. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is the end of the video. If you like the video... Hit that like button. 
and uh, be a good person.